I, I think the most important w w romantic poet is probably Wordsworth. Um, I mean, I think he's I think very out of fashion at the moment, isn't he? People slightly. He's an easy poet to dislike. With daffodils he, and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but he's an easy poet to dislike. I, I, I disliked Wordsworth when I studied studied his work when when I was um, a, a student because he can come across as pious and, and sanctimonious and banal and prosaic and all those things. Um, and also, he's got this grotesque ego, and everything becomes about him. Yeah. Um, and he also wrote far too long. He should have died in 805 instead of he limped on for the 45 years. And so this is kind of... Well, it just keeps dying at 25. Yes, yeah. So it, it helps with Shelley Byron, they all die young. And, 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 and Coleridge wrote all his poetry young, pretty much. And so he stopped as well. But whereas Wordsworth kept on going. So there's yeah. this remorseless and depressing productivity about him. But he's... I think he's... What, what's the great mistake about Wordsworth is to think that he's... The great mistake is to think that he's a nature poet. Yes, that's what people assume. Him he's be. not a nature poet. He never looks at anything. He never really looks at a flower. If you want, so if you want a romantic poet, to, if you want to see what a, have a poem about a, what a flower or a bee or something looks like, you go to John Clare. Yeah. You don't go to Wordsworth. Yeah. Wordsworth never looks at anything. Not really. What he does is he instantly transforms the place he is in into uh, a kind of s symbolic vignette of his own imagination, his own fears, his own desires, and so forth. And so he's, he, I, I, I think Wordsworth is best understood, not in terms of, say, 19th or 18th century nature, you know, na you know landscape painting, you know, the, you know, these kind of framed with lots of, you know, busy mountains and busy trees. He's not, that's not Wordsworth at all. Wordsworth is much more like a, a, a 20th century abstract painting in which you get a scene and you kind of wipe out everything apart from one or two tiny things. You know, and so you get, you know, he looks at a scene and what you get is a, you get this, um, a piece of grass which is kind of inexplicably clear and lush. And then you get uh, a, a, a little tower. And then you get a woman or a girl walking along with a picture on her head. And then you get a, 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 a you know, and, that, and that's all you get. And, and you, you get those details, the, the tower, the grass, the girl with the picture on her head repeats it twice. Or you get another scene where you get a, a gibbet where someone was hanged years ago. Or you get another scene where you've got um, a hawthorn bush and a wall and a sheep, and then a hawthorn bush and a wall and a sheep, and that's it. And what you get is some sense that this, this figure is talking about it, remembering when he was there, and somehow these, these, these objects get this strange, uncanny energy. Mm. This it's fascinating. So what is Wordsworth's vision then? What, what does he believe? I think he's struggling with the idea of what, 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 what makes a human being. Um, I think he's racked by, by semi-understood forms of guilt and um, almost, the, almost the guilt of being alive at all um, and grief. I think he's, he, he, he's, you know, he's, he's orphaned at a reasonably young age, then he suffers the de death of, of um, he, then he, you know, he has a relationship with this woman in France and a baby and he, he abandons them. And then two of his kids die in very quick succession, and his his his, his beloved brother dies, and then he has this terrible, se you know, violent and distressing severing from uh, Coleridge and so forth. So he he's he's a he's a figure who's defined by separation, by some sense of, of of loneliness. He has a longing for immortality, but he's got this wonderful bit. He's got this um, he's got these uh, this essay on epitaphs where he talks he talks about you know how we write epitaphs because we. We, 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 we believe in epitaphs, we have epitaphs because we all believe instinctively in our immortality. And if I did not believe in immortality, my personal immortality, then life would be just unendurable. It'd be like walking around like this cold shadow or a shadow of yourself. And of course, Wordsworth's poetry is, is endlessly inhabited by that, exactly that, walking around and discovering shadows of yourself. Th these poems where you get this, this traveller walking, you know, the poet figure walking along and suddenly seeing this other strange figure who, look, who looks like a, a, a sea animal or something, or a, a sort of a, a, a sort of half, sort of half alive, half dead or undead figure who speaks things. All these are kind of doubles for the poet in the sense that, that you kind of live in this, this half light, this kind of life as a shade and trying to discover what it might mean to be fully alive. And his, his poetry is all about trying to collect, trying to go back to his past to try and recover some sense of fullness. So even his most famous poems like Tintin Abbey, which is often seen as a poem of, um, 
of sort of the assertion of the one life. You know, I, I look at the mountains. And it's not that at all. It's it's a poem which is constantly struggling with despair, with with a, 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 tempted by suicide. I think that poem, for example. I, th I think you know, and the, the kind of the melancholy of time passing, the sense of the, 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 once upon a time I was this and now I'm this, and what does it mean to have lost that that me that was there? And so this terrible sense of deficit in, in, in life and the d desire to recover that. I think he's, um, yeah, I, I think he's a poet who's very, very easily misread be because he's, he's, he, it's not, it's not recognised how whenever Wordsworth is writing with intensity, he's writing, his worlds are s symbolic, they're, 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 they're metaphoric, they're not, they're not descriptions of what he's actually seeing before his eyes.